Hello. Hoy voy a hablar del imperativo. Today we're going to talk about the imperative. What is the imperative for? The imperative, and they have to put it in the name, that's what call it imperativo, but actually it could mean many, uh, it could be for suggestions, okay, for instructions, for, for example, um, in instructions of how to hook up I don't know, uh, the, your computer or something. Do this, 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 that's an instruction. It could be in a recipe. Also, it could be a suggestion, for example, um, go to sleep. I mean, you're not saying like in an order, but just saying like a suggestion, like if I'm tired, just go to sleep. That could be also mean um, imperative, okay? So uh, we're gonna start first with the grammar. And so, the most important thing is first let's study a little bit the grammar and then after that I will show you how to use it like in a real conversation or a real like exercise or how you use this. Obviously uh, to practice well please subscribe to my channel uh, first of all and then also to practice um, with a language partner once you become our student I can pair you with a language partner and we do different events where you can practice what you saw in class and win conversations with other people. So, okay, let's start right now. So in this case, you see, so let's start with uh, the regular first, regular verbs. So I'm going to put it a little bit bigger and then regular verbs. So on purpose, guys, I'm comparing with the present simple because it comes from the present simple, the imperative, okay? And I want you to think a little bit. And what about, first of all, why do you think you don't have yo or ellos in this case? Well, you don't have yo or ellos because you are, if you are giving a suggestion or an order, you're doing it first to somebody else, you're directing yourself to somebody else. So ellos, they will listen to you, right? And yo, generally, you don't do it to yourself. You don't give an order to yourself or a suggestion to yourself. So that's why you have two, ustedes, nosotros. Okay, so you have piensas, eh, piensa, piensan, pensamos. Remember, this is the present tense. And then the imperative is piensa, piense, piensen, pensemos. So can you tell me first one thing? What is going on with do in comparison with the present tense? Think about it, please. Is taking out what? The S, right? Can you see that? Taking out the S, taking out the S in two, right? And then what is going on with usted, ustedes y nosotros? It changes the A for E. So for AR, it changes A por E. For ER and IR, it changes E por A, okay? E por A. So that's the um, regular verse in this case. Before I go to the irregulars, let's do some notes. So basically what I'm trying to say is, so this is the imperative grammar. So we compare it, what we, uh, we compare it with um, the present tense. So tú, usted, ustedes y nosotros. It doesn't have the ellos. So if I compare it with the present tense, let's say trabajar, the most common verbs like comer, to eat, and vivir, right? So, es tú trabajas, right? In present tense. In present tense, es tú trabajas. So in tú, you have to put trabaja, okay? So let me do this. So you take out... Um, Sorry, let me do this. So, trabajar, tú trabajas, trabaja, trabajan y trabajamos. So, like as I was saying, you drop, you see, you drop the S, so it's trabaja. So, for example, trabaja más, work more, whatever, like as an order or suggestion. And then you change this A por an E, that's the rule. So, trabaj, sorry, trabaje. Usted trabaje, ustedes trabajen, let's say I'm your boss, and you say trabajen más, whatever, work more. Trabaje más, okay? Let's work more, that's a suggestion. Trabajemos más, whatever. Then comer, so comer in the present tense is comes, right? Come, comemos y nosotros, sorry, nosotros comemos 
y ustedes comen, ¿ok? So in this case you drop the e, the s like I tell, so es come y acá coma, so es the opposite. It changes e por a, ¿ok? Coma, coman y comamos. With vivir, let's do the same thing. Vivir, and I will give you exercise. Don't worry, I will send you and in the link you're gonna have exercises with this. And I will send you these notes and the material and you will have to practice this a little bit. You have to study a little bit. So, vivir, you have vivir, right? So, tú vives, right? Then usted vive, ustedes viven, nosotros vivimos. Like, this is the present tense, okay? I'm comparing with present tense, indicative, present tense. I compare with present tense and present tense. So you drop the S, so it's vive, okay? And then in here you change the E for the A. Okay, so it's vi vas, vi van, vi vamos. Everything changes for the A. Okay. So and then in the regulars here, uh, what do you think is changing? So you drop in the E the S in here, good job, the S, but something is changing in nosotros, you see? So, for the verse that changes in the root in the present tense, O to U E, and E to E, E, nosotros here, you see, es muestra, muestre, it changes the stem, that's what is called a stem changing verse, it will change in nosotros, the nosotros is going to be different. So. I'm gonna focus on the ones that are more important than in my opinion. For example, pensar, you're gonna use it often. Pensar is to think. Like, let's think better about this. Pensemos, pensar, and then, uh, let's see, in the class, mostrar, I guess, um, mostrar, let's show this. Por ejemplo, mostremos esto, mostrar. Es O to U E, mostrar. Okay. So let's see this stem changing verbs that I'm talking to you about. Why is called stem changing verbs? Changing verbs, but in the imperative. Changing verbs in imperative. So in this case, guys, in this case is, well, we're always going to compare with the present simple. So it's tu piensa, si, piensa, lo siento, usted piensa, ustedes piensan, nosotros pensamos. So, when you change it, as you drop the S, so this is the same, piensa, and then you change A por E, okay? So, piensa, piensa, and so you change, sorry, A por E, piense, I'm sorry. Uh, you, you see, it's with AR, you change it por an E. A por E, ustedes, A por E, piensen. Y nosotros, you see, pensemos. You see, what I'm trying to say, you see that this one, so you follow the stem of this one. But in here, can you see it's different than the rest? Like in here, it wasn't different, the stem. But in here, the stem is different. That's what is called stem changing verse. With mostrar, generally happens with O to verse that change O to UE, like these guys. To muestras, muestras, and then muestra, muestran, y mostremos, most, mostremos, sorry, mostramos. And then when you change it, you drop what? For the imperative, you draw the S, yes, so muestra, muestre, muestren, a muestremos. Okay, so then also the ones to change E to E, eh? Eh, por ejemplo, pensa, eh, you see, E, e to I, E, this one changes E to I, and this changes O to U, E. And in those ones, you will see this kind of changing or pattern. Now let's see the completely irregulars, okay? The completely irregulars, they are important. Um, let me show you how you, even though they are completely irregulars, let me show you how you can have like a guided. Um, this one is a little trick. So check at your, 
presente, right? Check your presente. In poner, hacer, tener, venir. First of all, of course, you don't have yo or ellos. Then tú, usted, ustedes. So, and tú. What is going on with tú? You have to compare, in this case, the completely irregular with yo presente because that gives you like a guidance, even though they don't follow any pattern really because they don't follow the regular pattern of these ones, but they kind of follow, you can do use the yo presente for a guidance. So what is doing the completely regular is taking, you see, the first three letters, pon, as, ten, de, di, sal, se, except up until here that this is completely regular. And so it's taking the first three layers. In this one, you have to add una zeta because ag is hard to pronounce for us. That's why you say as. And also a, it just doesn't flow. They just put the add the C so it closes it. Instead of saying a, as. As tu tarea, for example, do your homework or something. So unfortunately, this is a little bit by heart, guys. I mean, I can send to you these materials um, now by e by email or in a link but yes this is like by heart so and so ponte and then the rest you see that it changes what it changes the o this last o for an a and then it keeps the stem you see ponga pongan pongamos now the only one that doesn't have nosotros vengamos because i'm already here i cannot say let's come right i'm already here so it's Exacto, it's, that's, that's what it doesn't exist. So it's ven, venga, venga. So, and it changes o por a in all of them, okay? So, and salir also. So you have poner, I'm gonna just copy and paste, I think it's gonna be easier and faster so I can get to what I want to show you, how you form it and how you study. I'm just giving you like a guidance on how you study this to make it your life easier. So, and so in this case, um, so puse poner, hacer, salir. So it's always right to ustedes, okay? And then um, in this case, so poner, let's say. So en yo, poner es pongo, right? Pongo, hago, tengo, Vengo, digo y salgo. Tengo. Sorry. Salgo y vengo. I did this wrong. Okay, so you see all these verbs we have to work on. Entonces, let me take this out. Let me paste it uh, horizontally. Let's see, transpose. Yeah, there you go. And then you see, so let's do poner. So poner will be in two will be pon, okay? You see pon. En hacer, like I told you, will be as, okay? Then ten, then ven, then di, and then sal. And then the rest, guys, what you do is just you change in poner. Um, you just change the O in all of them for an A and you follow the same, you see, ponga, pongan, pongamos. You can do, um, I can give you this file, you can finish the rest. Do in as, do haga, you see, haga, hagan, hagamos, tengan, tengan, tengamos. Okay, these are for the imperative affirmatives. So like I tell my students here, don't kill me in this part because the imperative negatives, the one that is gonna change, I'm gonna show you. Okay, this is the imperative affirmative, right? Affirmativo means like, and uh, you don't have to use a no, right? Like here is no, is a negative of this. So what is different? In, in all of them, you see in two ustedes y nosotros, in each verb seems to be the same, right? No coma, no coma, no comamos, the same rule, I mean. And then in here, can you see that in two is different? Instead of saying no piensa, it's no pienses? Yes, exactly. It follows kind of the same. Actually, it makes it easier. It follows like the rest. 
instead of dropping the S like in here, in here you have, I'm gonna give you one example, and in stroke are, you see? So we saw, sorry, I'm gonna just actually use this one, so it's much easier. So you guys remember when I told you, okay, in this case, we're gonna just drop the S in two, right? This is the imperative negative. So we're gonna drop the S, right, in two, trabaja. Well, in the imperative negative, guys, you have to just follow, so like the rest is no, first of all, obviously, no. And then in, in this case, it's no trabaje, so it's the same, right? In two, in two, ustedes y nosotros es lo mismo, so it's no trabajen y no trabajemos. And in this case, instead of saying no trabaja, it actually also changes uh, this A, okay? This A, it changes for an E. So we no trabajes, that would be the difference. No trabajes. So in the imperative negative, the only one that is different from the affirmative is two. Uh, from the affirmative, affirmative is two, okay? So you see here, no trabajes. So instead of saying um, no come, when you drop the E, is no comas, okay? So be no comas, no coma, the rest is the same, no coman, no coma, no comas. Okay, and then in vivir, what do you think it would be? Instead of no vive, um, sorry, no viva, no viva, would be no vivas, see, instead of, sorry, instead of dropping the S, it would be no vivas, no, viv no vivas, no vivan, no vivamos, and etc. Okay, that would be for the imperative negative. And then in here with the irregularities in negative also only changes two, okay guys? So I'm gonna come back to our notes in here with the negatives, uh, with the completely regulars, but in this case we're gonna just do a negative. So poner, tener, and let's see. So you see poner era ponter. Okay, so with the negative, so imperative, negative, completely regulars, would be, instead of no pon, would be no pongas, okay? And then no ponga, then the rest is the same. No pongan y no pongamos. Then in tener, instead of ten, tenga, tengan y tengamos, instead of no ten, it's gonna be no tengan. No tengas. It changes no tengas. Actually, if you start thinking, it's easier than negative because it follows like the rest of the no tenga, usted no tenga, it follows just the, like the rest of the usted, ustedes y nosotros. You see, no tenga, no tengan, no tengamos, and that's it. No tengamos, sorry, trying to write fast so you don't get bored. No tengan, no tengamos, okay? So I'm finished the rest, please, and at home. And then, well, you are in your home later. Um, so that's with the regular negative. Now, um, what I wanna do now is, um, because it's also very important to see this indirect object and indirect object. So, um, why? Direct object, remember, if you haven't seen my video of direct object, you will have to see it, is what makes things shorter, okay? The things that make it shorter, for example, I gave it to you would be in English, so yo te lo di. So for imperatives, it's very important because, for example, when I'm trying to give you an order, we already know what we're talking about. So for example, um, hazla, haz tu tarea, es hazla, right? Or no la hagas. It's very common in this to use that. So you have to know the indirect objects. So I'll put that link for you to review the indirect object before we see 
this video. Let's see in the next video then um, the indirect object on direct object on imperative, and then we'll see how to use it in a conversation. Okay, thank you very much. Bye bye.